got to know him when he was trying to explain, particularly with social, to, to the uh, Senate Intel Committee, particularly on social media, how this all works. Mr. Watts, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Um, I think I want to start, we invited you on before we, we had our breaking news story go public about the actual news. It seems, by the way, with Russia hacking, it's almost like the federal government's acting like Facebook. At first, Facebook said, oh, no way that could have happened, no fake news. And then every month from the election, they've admitted more and more ways that, um, that a foreign government interfered. Is that what we're getting from the federal government? They had insisted, no, 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 no. Voter rolls had never been touched. Yeah, it, they always say exceptionally small or just a few. But the fact of the matter is, one precinct, if they change votes in one precinct, if they create pandemonium or have voter rolls disappear in one precinct, you will undermine the integrity of elections around the United States. You can advance an influence campaign that says that there's voter fraud or the election is rigged. How do you know that your vote counted? This is the purpose of Russian active measures. It's to erode confidence in democracy. So what the Secretary of State said and you know DHS said basically in conjunction today is, yes, it did happened and they're going to do it again and we really don't have a response to this it's been really two and a half to three years that we've seen them start their meddling campaigns and we're coming up an election and and you can't even utter the word russia in the white house right now no look i mean and, and it it seems pretty obvious why we can't expect the white house to sort of lead this effort but are you aware of any effort anywhere in the federal government where somebody is working on you know maybe it's their own little task force about okay what preventatives can we put in? How are we going to advise local campaigns? How do we advise local uh, election officials here? Is there any efforts within the government that you know of? Well, what I do know is this. The State Department, even going back to 2016, got money to deal with understanding foreign influence. And that has been slow going to the Global Engagement Center at State Department. That money has been there. Uh, the Tillerson team has not acted on it. And I'm hearing rumors they're starting to get their feet on the ground there, you know, over a year later. The mm -hmm. other part is on this whole idea of voting machines being national infrastructure that we need to defend. Uh, the DHS secretary under Obama wanted to do that. The states pushed back. I have not heard how they've resolved that issue. And even looking forward in terms of what the task force is, I have briefed people in pretty much every aspect of the U.S. government. I have not heard back, and it seems we're in a persistent hover waiting to develop yeah. some strategy around this. I don't know that you can do that if you can't walk into the White House and have the leader of our country be right. able to talk to what that strategy will be. I mean, look, we, don't, we had an Iraq War study group. We had a 9-11 commission. We had the war. When major events, De potentially destabilize this country. We like we throw off our political hats and we, and we have some sort of big bipartisan team. Some would say it's a little thumb sucky sometimes, but there's not even a there's no there's not even talk of some sort of commission like this. Yeah, I think our greatest hope really is the Senate Intel Committee. You know, on, on the government side. Uh, thankfully, though, you've actually seen corporations in the private sector uh, move to do encrypted ap applications, you know, so mm -hmm. that political parties can, can, can communicate. You've seen civil society start to mobilize, you know, even in a bipartisan way. I've worked with some of those groups. But these are just a fraction of what needs to be done. They're, they're low resource. They're people m basically volunteering their time. And it's not a serious strategy for the country. And it does beg the question if did we just invite people to hack us today? Because we're in Tillerson's right. speech, he talked about consequences. What have the consequences been? You know, I, I would laugh right now if I was Russia. I'd say, what are you going to do? Launch another congressional investigation? Please do that, because this has been the greatest act of measure of success of our life, and you guys are perpetuating it. Well, and there's been no sanctions. There's been no. Right. I mean, look, and I think we've discussed this before. Um, and I know after the North Korean hacking incident of Sony Pictures, we may or may not have done an equivalent style of, of sort of an attempt to shut them down. The federal government never confirmed, but there was some sort of attempt to at least try to retaliate. We've not even thought about retaliation because obviously it's possible 
that those that make those decisions are, are compromised? I, I think it's two parts. One, those that make the decisions are compromised and also unwilling. I do kind of wonder sometimes if they think they'll stand to benefit from this. What if uh, Russia influences the elections such that any Kremlin opponent that's in the United States is the target in their congressional districts, you know, coming up? That would be pretty devastating. And at the same point, the other part of it that is real and we need to account for is that we are extremely vulnerable. The Russians are, are great masters, both in hacking and influence. Their cyber capabilities far uh, outstretch our vulnerabilities, and they could really do some damage to us. It could be in the financial sector, it could be in the government right. sector, or even infrastructure. So that we shouldn't take that too lightly whenever we're starting to talk about responses. No, and the president's done a lot to try to um, delegitimize the media, which of course is their favorite way of doing this. If you just look at RT and Sputnik, anyway. Clint Watts, thank you, man.